With a look at what's coming up next on Channel 7 News at 6.30. Thank you, Penny. Coming up at 6.30, a court fight over two pit bulls who savagely attacked a grandmother a year and a half ago, but the dogs have never been destroyed. You'll hear Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu denying that he was a criminal before he was executed. And cold U.S. weather takes a terrible toll in one southern town. It's been without water now for four days. Those stories and more next on Channel 7 News at 6.30. It's now. It's Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout. Now, big cash back or 4.8% financing on Grand Prix. It won't last long. See your Pontiac excitement dealer now. Rich and easy. Harvey's Bristol Cream. To golden days and mellow nights. Harvey's Bristol Cream. Ring in the new year with WSBN and Winterfest at Light Up Lauderdale, December 31st. Brought to you by the Florida Lottery and WSBN 7. Live from Channel 7, South Florida's news station. Denise White, Rick Sanchez, weather with Bob Soper, and sports with Jim Barry. This is Channel 7 News at 6.30. Two pit bulls that two judges wanted to put to death a year and a half ago are still alive and, according to officials, meaner than ever. Hello again, everybody. We have also learned tonight that if you live in Broward County, you are likely footing the bill to keep those dogs alive. A year and a half ago, no one could believe the family wanted the animals back after the dogs viciously attacked their own 76-year-old grandmother. Now, Channel 7 Susan Kelleher reports, the dogs are so dangerous, they're rarely let out of the kennel. We should warn you, some of the pictures you are about to see are very graphic. Kennel supervisor Calvin Frick goes where few animal control officers have gone before. Into the cages of vicious pit bulls, Honey and Bruiser, locked up and off limits after this brutal attack on a 76-year-old grandmother. These two have seemed to show a propensity to being unpredictable. They've bitten more than one person, and the last bite was very bad, and they just show that they're more dangerous than anything. For grandmother Anna Young, dangerous became nearly deadly, seen here on life support after she was mauled by the family pets last July. She later died in an ambulance wreck, you know, but detectives say the attack slashed. was bad enough. Um, there were big chunks of skin missing uh, over parts of her body and big slash marks all over. It looked like someone had attacked her with a razor or a knife or something. And uh, the, she was dragged around the floor in the residence. A county judge ordered the dogs be destroyed, but owner Terrence Young demanded an appeal. Since then, the family moved from their Pompano home to Ocala where their phone number is unlisted. The Youngs haven't visited Honey or Bruiser for almost a year. They were ordered to stay away when the visits became too emotional and the dogs became upset. But the family is still fighting to get both of these animals back. They were adamant. Uh, money was no object. They would do anything that they had to do to see that these dogs were not destroyed. Since last July, it's cost the county almost $3,000 to keep both dogs. Honey and Bruiser now sit in limbo, waiting for an appeals judge to decide their fate. And some say, getting meaner every day. In Fort Lauderdale, Susan Kelleher, Channel 7 News. Now, because of this attack, a vicious dog ordinance was changed to allow dangerous canines to be destroyed after the first attack. Previously, a dog had to attack twice before being euthanized. Jane? Here are some of the other stories making headlines in South Florida tonight. A shock for workers at Miami International Airport as they find a dead body on a plane. Ground crews were going about their usual business this morning when they opened up Eastern Flight 928. It had just come in from Barbados. Inside, they found the body of a man wedged inside the rear door of the plane. Metro-Dade police say they don't know who the man is. He may be from Barbados. They will perform an autopsy to see how he died. Miami police are searching for a stockbroker missing since yesterday. 45-year-old George Keinzel left his Brickell Avenue office yesterday afternoon. He was heading for a nearby gas station and hasn't been seen since. 
Kinzel is described as six feet tall, 190 pounds, green eyes, and salt and pepper hair. Police are asking anyone with any information about Kinzel to call the missing persons department. A South Florida soldier who died in battle in Panama will get a hero's burial tomorrow. 30-year-old Army Specialist Alejandro Manrique is scheduled to be laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. The Lauderdale Lakes man was killed during the first day of the invasion. His family left for the funeral today, accompanied by a military escort. We will travel with them and have that story. Tonight, South Florida volunteers are lending a helping hand to the Panamanian people. The group is gathering food and medical supplies at a Spanish-language radio station in Coral Gables. The Miami Herald is providing trucks to bring those supplies to the airport, while Eastern is scheduled to fly the supplies to Panama tomorrow morning. The political standoff in Panama tops our news around the world tonight. The Vatican says there is no reason why it should turn ousted leader Manuel Noriega over to the United States. Meanwhile, American troops are surrounding the Vatican Embassy in Panama City, where Noriega has been hiding out for three days. Channel 7 has learned that there may be a deal in the works to send Noriega to the Dominican Republic. The president says that U.S. troops will wait outside the Vatican Embassy as long as it takes until Noriega is brought to justice. While the fighting has died down throughout Panama, American troops still have plenty to do. Hundreds of soldiers are turning into cashiers, giving civilians $150 for any dignity battalion weapons they bring in. Dozens of Florida Army reservists from the Panhandle and South Florida are also heading to Panama. The troops are scheduled to leave on Friday to help restore <laughs> Panama's new government. Tonight, help is on the way for the victims of Romania's bloody revolution as the people start to return to a normal life there. Romania's yeah. Warsaw Pact allies were among the first to answer calls for food and medical supplies. Meanwhile, the tension is easing in the country as the new government announces an end to Communist Party domination. They're also promising free elections sometime next April. Tonight, uh, Romanian officials are releasing these pictures of deposed leader Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife shortly before their execution. A quick secret trial found the couple guilty of genocide, sentencing them to death and giving them a chance, no chance, I should say, for appeal. Ceausescu and his wife were accused of killing thousands of Romanians during the Democratic Revolution. Israel staged its third military attack in Lebanon in the past 36 hours, raiding guerrilla fighters from the pro-Iranian Hezbollah. The attack reportedly left 12 people dead and dozens more wounded. Rescue workers used spotlights to dig out victims from the rubble. The Israeli-backed South Lebanon Army militia also joined in the assault. In national headlines, a Hanukkah menorah is sparking controversy tonight in Pittsburgh. The city is going to court to get this 40-foot menorah removed from outside the city county building. The Hanukkah symbol was put up last night by a Jewish group acting on last summer's Supreme Court ruling allowing menorahs on public property. But the city of Pittsburgh says it has the right to decide what goes on city property. A longtime white supremacist with a history of violent acts may have played a role in the recent rash of mail bombings terrorizing the Southeast. This blast in Savannah killed a civil rights attorney, while another blast in Birmingham, Alabama killed a federal judge. Tonight, an Alabama newspaper says the FBI has a suspect. His name is J.B. Stoner. He was once convicted in the bombing of a black church in Birmingham. Tonight, the FBI is denying that newspaper report. Investigators in the state of Washington are trying to figure out what caused last night's fiery crash of a small commuter plane killing everybody on board. The United Press plane was coming in for a landing late last night at the Tri-Cities Airport when it went down 100 feet short of the runway. The plane apparently split in half and burst into flames. Six people died in the accident. So far, officials claim the plane crashed in clear weather. Tonight, an investigation is continuing. The brutal winter weather has left the town of Jackson, Mississippi, with a unique problem. Most people haven't had any running water for four days because water pipes all over the town are completely frozen. All those who do have water have to boil it first because it may be contaminated. And tonight, officials are working overtime to try and resolve some of the problems. The same kind of problem in Texas tonight. Hundreds of people in that state are without water because of frozen and broken pipes. The Lone Star State is calling in out-of-state reinforcements, and hopefully they will let, uh, let local plumbers give them a hand. Jane? Fortunately, our big chill has passed on. Bob Soper now joining us for a quick check on our forecast. Bob? All right, Jane, are we working out right? Can the big chill go in for an Academy Award this year? <laughs> Maybe not. 
Looks like we've got some clear skies over South Florida tonight, but it won't be as cold. Overnight lows, 48 to 52. It'll still be cool. Tomorrow, sunny and mild. High temperatures, 72 to 76. Now, if you want to take the old boat out, it looks pretty good. Fairly quiet out there. Winds out of the north at 5 to 10 knots in the Keys. North to northeast, 5 to 10 knots. Dayton Broward waters, 2 to 3 feet seas around Dayton Broward. Light chopping bay waters for the peninsula, but down in the Keys, 1 to 2 feet in the seas and bay waters will be smooth. Extended forecast looks real good for the Junior Orange Bowl Parade. 11.30 Friday afternoon down in Coral Gables. 57 in the morning, but up to 75 during the afternoon. 60 degrees Saturday morning, 76 in the afternoon. On New Year's Eve, 61 in the morning and about 77 in the afternoon. For light up Lauderdale Sunday evening, temperatures should be right around 70 degrees. We don't look for any rain right through the weekend. Jane. No awards for our big chill. Thanks, Bob. Bye. Coming up, a Miami girl is paralyzed after a security guard opens fire in a Jamaican swimming pool. The horrifying story from our crime task force office. We'll have an update on an Opelika cop who apparently accidentally shot himself. And later, you just can't hide those lion eyes, especially when the circus is in town. Those stories, when we come back. Testimony continues today. So, you're all set for the new year, huh? All ready for 1990? But isn't it past your bedtime? Serve a WD brand roast from Winn-Dixie for New Year's. A boneless bottom round roast is $1.99 a pound. Buy eight pounds of Harvest Fresh Florida oranges for $1.99. And see us for details and double coupon save. Santa's Enchanted Forest is the most... Nude bars, alcohol, Lauderdale stops it all. Eastern pilots go on strike, it's Frank Lorenzo. WSVN7. Earlier in the newscast, we told you about an explosion at a South Florida factory in Broward County. We now have an update on that situation. Channel 7's Rick Leventhal has reached the scene. He's live in Pembroke Pines with the latest. Rick, what do we know now? Well, Rick, there was an explosion here. It was an ammonia gas leak that did explode. There was one Coca-Cola employee who was hurt. It was a burn to the arm, and it's not described as serious. Now, we can smell ammonia in the air out here, but they say the leak has been contained. Right now, there are hazmat teams, uh, hazardous materials teams from two fire departments, Broward Fire Department and Hallandale Fire Department, on scene. They're inspecting the leak, which is in the east end of the building, and they're trying to figure out the best way to get that gas out of here. Now, first they thought they would just vent it through the roof of this building. Now they're saying they may try to fight it with chemicals. You may ask, how dangerous is this ammonia gas? Well, we asked that question of Broward Sheriff's Office spokesman Jim Leodal. I'm told by the experts that it's extremely dangerous when you're in close contact with it. It can cause uh, burns on the skin and it's uh, toxic when it's breathed. At this point, we believe that the gas is contained in the east end of the building and the hazardous materials teams from the uh, two different fire departments are going to determine exactly how to get it out of the plant. And we'll there is a trailer park to the east of this plant that we're told has been evacuated. We're not sure when those people will, will be allowed back into their homes. And they tell us that right now we're safe where we're standing here, but there's no telling. When these hazardous materials guys come back out and figure out what danger there is, then they may move the perimeter, they may move us out of here, and they may continue to keep these people out of their homes until they get rid of the gas. Rick, back to you. Okay, uh, Rick, again, just one person hurt, but uh, it appears that's not serious, correct? That's correct. Rick Leventhal reporting from Pembroke Pines. Thank you. Jane? Uh, Metro-Dade police officers in satisfactory condition tonight after apparently shooting himself with his own gun. 32-year-old Valentine Gomez was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital last night, moments after shooting himself in the leg. The accident happened at the K-9 unit headquarters at Opelika Airport. Police say the gun went off when Gomez was putting it back in his holster. Officers are calling the shooting accidental, but they are still investigating it. An 18-year-old Dade County girl lies paralyzed in Mount Sinai Hospital tonight. She was shot in the back by a security guard while on vacation in Jamaica. 
Channel 7 crime specialist Ralph Page is in our crime task force office right now with the rest of that story. Ralph? Rick, the young girl is a graduate of Palmetto Senior High School and a student at Miami-Dade Community College. She was on a family vacation when the shooting occurred. Schreiber was struck once in the back, the bullet lodging close to her spinal cord. Her cousin, Michelle Salem, was struck in the arm, but the wound was superficial. Ms. Salem says she and Samantha were talking by the resort motel pool about 2.15 in the morning when she heard what she thought were firecrackers. I looked at her, I said, Samantha, fireworks. And she looked, and I remember her smiling for a second. And the next thing I knew, she hit the ground, and she said, I was shot. And she said, get my parents. And I ran in, and I hadn't realized I was shot at the time. Ms. Salem says she has no idea why the guard shot them. Meanwhile, Samantha's trying to recuperate at Mount Sinai Hospital. A month ago, she was sledding in New York. Doctors say it may be a long time before she does that again. Jamaican police are now calling the shooting an unfortunate error in judgment on the part of the security guard. They say he mistook the girls for intruders. The guard has not been charged, but the investigation is continuing. Tonight on our 10 o'clock task force report, we'll tell you the story of a Brickell Avenue stockbroker who walked out of his office never to be seen again. Rick? Channel 7's Ralph Page, Crime Task Force Office. Thank you, Ralph. Still ahead, Chuck Berry may be changing his tune to Johnny B. Bad. We'll tell you why. We'll be back. Jack Butler has just lost one job, but is about to take on another. All right, just relax. You're going to be great. There's nothing to this, you know. Honey, we got it covered, right, guys? Whoever thought that staying home with the kids could be hazardous to your health? Now, do you want to go over that list one more time? When the chips are down, it takes a real man to rise to the occasion. Michael Keaton and Terry Garr hit home with a gender-bender comedy of the 80s. Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Tonight on WSBN 7, movie at 8. I got a friend who lives in a tree. I act like him, he acts like me. I got a friend with lots of hair. He's there at Metro Zoo. I see my buddies all the time. They run and jump, they hop and climb. We have fun and you can too down at Metro Zoo. M-E-T-R-O-Z-O-O -O, Metro Zoo. It's the greatest one day trip there is. Jingle your bells. What's in the bag, cat? Lincoln Mercury has something for everyone this week. Great year and deals on everything in stock. On Lincoln's? And Mercury's? Sable on Topaz on Cougar and Blitzen. Blitzen? Any toys in here, cat? Uh, nah, that's that's somebody else's bag. <laughs> for a great year and deal, come into your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. There's a company that more people have invested in than an IBM. GE and Ford combined. Its assets are greater than AT&T's and no one's ever lost a penny they put into it. But you don't have to go to Wall Street to find this company. You simply have to go to Main Street. Savings of America. America's largest savings institution. So that legendary rock and roll star Chuck Berry may be singing the blues instead of rock and roll. You see, a lawsuit charges him with videotaping women while they used a restroom in a Missouri restaurant near St. Louis. The suit claims Berry used the tapes for his own private entertainment. So far, the rock star has not responded to those charges. Okay? If you ever feel like it's a jungle out there, tonight you were right. Animals from the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus roamed the streets of Miami today. Elephants, llamas, and show horses were unloaded from their railroad cars and then tromped down Northwest First Avenue. Circus legend Gunter Gebel Williams led the caravan for his last visit to Miami with the greatest show on earth. He is retiring from the circus. The circus will perform at the Miami Arena beginning tomorrow night. It will run until January 7th. And speaking of animals, next in sports, we're going to take you where the buffaloes roam. These buffaloes, you see, they're in search of a national championship. We'll explain, and we'll be back. Limited time. Get a guaranteed rebate at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. They're raising prices. Volkswagen announces no price increase. 
That means our 1990 Fox is priced the same as last year's model. You get a powerful 1.8-liter engine, plus a long list of standard features you might not expect to find in a car of this class, all for the same price as last year. That's Volkswagen value. The 1990 Fox. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. Until December 31st, visit your local Volkswagen dealer for special year-end deals on select 89 models. You can call it New Orleans or New Orleans or New Orleans or whatever you want to call it, but Jim Barry is there, so Jay Heiler is here. How about New Orleans? New Orleans, there you go. New Orleans. I think that's what they say. University of Miami hit the practice field down in New Orleans today. The Canes worked out for a couple of hours at the Saints practice facility, gearing up for their Sugar Bowl showdown against Alabama. Jim Barry, as Rick said, will begin live reports tomorrow night. Now, back in town, University of Colorado stretched their wings at Tropical Park today. Head coach Bill McCartney is getting the Buffaloes ready for their Orange Bowl game against Notre Dame. Colorado comes in as the number one ranked team in the nation, but quarterback Darian Hagan realizes the team's talent is still in question. Yeah, I, I think we do have to prove a lot because we're a number one team and we're still underdog just because of we're playing Notre Dame and Notre Dame State. But, uh, you know, they're, they're a great team, and it's, it's a challenge for us to step up and rise to the occasion, and I think that this team is ready to do that. Down Houston way, Jerry Glanville is denying reports he'll be out as head coach if the Oilers don't reach the Super Bowl. Glanville and the Oilers host Pittsburgh in the AFC wildcard game on Sunday, but the team dropped their final two games of the season, missing out on a chance to win the Central Division. Glanville's antics on and off the field have started to take their toll on his relationship with the fans and management. Well, the Heat came up short last night to the Knicks at the arena, but you sure can't pin the blame for the loss. On center, Ronnie Cycli, he turned in just the performance Ron Rostein was looking for, and it was against maybe the best center in the league, Patrick Ewing. This pump fake sent Patrick crashing down to the floor in agony. Ewing came back, but he wasn't able to slow down the Heat's second-year center. Look at this move along the baseline, a quick turn, and he finished it off with the left hand. Cycli had 26 points and 11 rebounds, but he downplayed his big game afterwards in the locker room. Well, I don't want to compare myself to Patrick. Patrick is MVP of this league this year, and I'm just a pop that's grown up. And uh, in a couple of years, I hope that I can be as uh, as uh, as competitive as uh, as he is and as good as he is. But uh, right now, he's the head man, and he's uh, I just learned from what he does out there. Um, I thought he played well. I thought in that matchup, we held our own. Which anytime you can do that the way Ewing is playing now, that's a big plus. Ronnie's a pretty big pup. The Heat begin a long six-game road trip tomorrow night in Denver. Well, the U.M. basketball team has also been struggling lately, dropping their last two games. But the Canes are ready to turn things around tonight with the start of the Palm Beach Classic. Bill Foster would like to forget the Canes' last effort against Arizona in Tucson. It was no contest as Lute Olson's Wildcats made mincemeat out of Miami. But the Palm Beach Classic has brought out the best in the Canes, and Foster hopes that continues tonight against Lehigh. You think about the Miami Hurricane basketball team and, and Palm Beach, you think about success, we're seven and one, and we've had some of the best wins of our program up here, beating a really good Stanford team in the finals two years ago and beating a very good Wichita State team that was ranked in the top 25 last year. So uh, as coaches, uh, we enjoy coming up here. And tip-off is about 9 o'clock. It'll be the second game up there. For, so anyone wants to go see some college basketball tonight, get in their car and drive up to Palm Beach. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are not the uh, Orange Bowl and the Sugar Bowl games going to be played at the same time? Relatively about the same time. They expect the Orange <coughs> Bowl to be over last because of the big halftime show. But obviously, everyone's going to be watching the scoreboards back and can, forth. Can and you that imagine? Way. Everybody's going to be going back and forth on their television That's right. as well. Yes. And, of course, Miami will win one and Notre Dame will win the other. And then we'll get that big trophy. Exactly. Unless Michigan beats USC. No, supposedly that won't matter because they're third. And Canes in Notre Dame. But Bo retired. Oh, come on, Rick. Throws a wrench. Rick, you're supposed to be a Canes fan. I am a Canes right, fan. Thank right. you, Jay. Jay. Thanks, Jay. Time now to check in with Sally Fitz for a look at what's coming up tonight on Channel 7 News at 10 o'clock. Sally? All right, thank you, Jane. Coming up tonight at 10, we're going to let you know how things turn out at that Broward bottling plant. As we've been reporting to you, there was an explosion and fire at a Coca-Cola bottling plant on Pembroke Road. So far, there have been no major injuries. Also tonight, the shake is in more hot water on Miami Beach. We'll show you how some people are saying he's not taking taking perfect care of his flock of cats. And coming up at 7 on Inside Report, an exclusive look inside the Underground Railroad, the secret network set up to help people who are wanted for abducting their own children. Inside Report talks to the parents and children of these fugitive families who are wanted by the FBI. That's coming up at 7 tonight on Inside Report. Back to you, Jane and Rick.
Thanks, Sally. That is Channel 7 News at 6.30. Stay tuned for Inside Report with Penny Daniels and join us for Channel 7 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Rick Sanchez. I'm Jane Acre. You have a great night.